everyone wants to be fairly paid for their labor. I mean, of course you do. You don't want to just give it away for nothing. You want to have the ability to accumulate your wealth and have wealth that lasts forever. Well, in the old system, when it was gold based and silver based, you could actually do that because if a government wanted to tax you or do any other funny stuff, actually having gold in your hand or the ability to convert paper dollars into gold gave you that power. And money was supported by four key pillars. Number one is a tool of accounting for measure. So they know how much they're going to pay you. Also a tool of barter so that an economy could specialize. You can have a baker, you can have a farmer, you can have a lawyer, etc. You wanted a short term store of value to make sure that you were fairly paid for your labor. And then finally, it needed to be a tool of savings for future use so that no matter when you use this money, you were always fairly paid for the labor that created that. And that's when we had a gold and silver system, monetary system that was based on that. But it's not been tied to gold since 1971. And the reality is, is central banks have been and are changing the foundation and the definition of money. And you don't even realize it. But when I was researching for this piece, I found out that they had taken away one of the pillars of money. How nice is that? So we went from four functions to three, just a store of a short term store of value, a unit of account and a tool, a medium of exchange. So a tool for barter. Wait a minute. They completely eliminated your ability to save and have the same level of purchasing power in the future. At least this is more honest, which I'm about to show you, but I want you also to understand that what this does is force you to take really unnecessary risks to secure that future and keep pace with the devaluations of the currency and to keep pace with inflation. So let me show you two of the key tools that central banks have. And I'm going to start with purchasing power, because if you asked me and you said, Lynette, you can only have one graph. This would be the graph. This is from the Fred Federal Reserve Education Department. So this is theirs, not mine. And you can see from the original dollars worth of purchasing power, we've lost a lot. There's the original dollar up there. And when they first came out, you can see this 50% drawdown because the government had given the central bank the ability to create $2.4 for every dollar's worth of gold they held in deep storage. Today, let me, it kind of looks like it trails off here, but it really doesn't. Let me show you. And, and I'd like you to notice the zero there too. This is a more current chart going from 2008, which is when I believe the system really died and was put on life support to today. So that's what it's taken to make you kind of seem like they fixed everything, but they didn't. They just printed copious amounts of this. And here's the thing, whenever they do that, the value of what's already out there goes down and you can see this. So this is all by design because central banks uh, that create the money position for two things. For governments, this is the inflation, the almost invisible inflation tax that enables the government to tax you because they get the money first without going through legislation. And also it's what positions income and wealth inequality. And we're going to talk more about that in just a second, but you have to understand that by design inflation is a key component of fiat money. Fiat means by decree. So it is government backed money. And what are we told that supports the currency, the full faith and credit of the government. So as long as you trust them, then you will continue to loan them money. So credit and faith. 
And what's the other tool that they have? Because clearly we have roughly three cents left out of the original dollars worth of purchasing power. Well, the tool that they have used to regulate the rate and spate of inflation are interest rates. And these are the fed funds rates, which is an overnight interest rate. And we're going back to 1971 to 1982, when we were transitioning from a gold backed currency into a debt backed currency. So they ratcheted rates all the way up. This is what you hear about with Paul Volcker all the time, how he protected us from inflation. No, he transitioned us into a new system. And then over time, what they've had to do is lower interest rates more and more and more. And supposedly that has been good for the economy, but we're really what it's done. It's just allowed more and more and more debt because this is a debt based system. So these gray bars are actually official recessions, which we're not in yet, but uh, you might notice that every time they pushed or even attempted to push interest rates up, a recession followed. So when we talk about the coming re recession in 2023, well, you could pretty much count on it. Plus I've done other videos on yield curve inversions, et cetera, but let's just stick with this for the moment. Okay. So here's your trend and you can see it, you know, lower and lower highs, but they got to the point where it was at zero here and at zero there. So, you know, and they tested negative rates and that didn't really work to stimulate. It didn't do it anyway. And so now what the federal reserve is attempting to do, and they did attempt it back here in 2016 and it was a big fat fail, but they're raising rates because now it has become obvious up to this point, all this money printing has been held inside of the stock market, the bond market, the real estate market, right? That's where all the inflation has been hiding. Now it's in the regular markets and it's in the grocery store. It's at the gas pump and you and I, normal people notice that. And they start to lose confidence in those that are in power in the central banks and the governments. So this is a big problem for them because this is all based on credibility. This is a con game, no doubt about it. And you have to believe that they know what they're doing and that they can handle it. And what rapid inflation shows the world is that they can't. But what I would like you to clearly know between this graph, and I'm going back here one more time, just so you can see it. And this graph, the real problem is that we are out of purchasing power. So they must now attack your principal and we are out of the ability to lower interest rates. So that's why we have to reset into a new system. We have to transition away from this paper system into a digital system that gives the central banks even more control. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But once we went to a debt-based system, this is definitely what enabled the income and wealth inequality because inflation allows employers to pay people less and less, even though nominally they're getting paid more, but that also enables greater profits to float to the top. So when Nixon took us off the gold standard, you can see how productivity and income followed suit until that magic date, 1971, when we went into a new system, that's when that income and wealth transfer really began. And they started shifting a lot of things, risk, et cetera, to onto the shoulders of the individuals, the very naive individuals, but fortune 500 CEOs are paid from double to 5,000 times more than their employees. Back in the seventies, it was typically a 20 to one really. Good work if you can get it, isn't it? But it is also that ownership equals wealth. 